Mariev Vayakul, thank you for joining me today. Uh, you're welcome. This, uh, you're, we're coming up to a big, important date for the Juno Beach Center. Let me get you just to explain a little bit about what Juno Beach Center is. It's a museum. It's the only Canadian museum located on the beaches of uh, Normandy, the D-Day beaches. And uh, it's been in place since 2003. It's a private, non-profit organization that's been founded by a group of Canadian D-Day veterans who began fundraising for the creation of the center, like, in the 1990s, basically. What goes on there during the year, for example? Well, D-Day is kind of like Christmas, (laughs) and the Juno Beach Center is what makes the rest of the year, you know, uh, relevant. So we're open pretty much 11 months of the year, and... Mm. We offer uh, lots of public guided tours. Uh, there's exhibitions, obviously. One would think that the center is a, a D-Day museum, but it's um, it's not that. It was a clear wish of the veterans who founded it that we were to be not a D-Day museum. Like, there's 50 others on the beaches of D-Day. So it's a cultural center. It's a museum about our history before the war, during the war, after the war. Now, it's interesting that you mention that because recently you, you got a letter from a visitor, a very nice letter, who, who said, amongst other things, and I will put this on the website so that people can read the portion here oh, that I'm, great. I'm talking about. But he says, uh, being British, he learned a lot about the British contribution, and I presume that's pretty much the same for Americans and other allies, but nothing, nothing at all about the Canadian contribution. And he also said when he visited the Juno Centre, he was quite surprised to learn about the Hong Kong uh, campaign. And he, having that in his uh, heritage and background, he said, nobody talks about that. And he was surprised to learn about it. So obviously, again, there's a lot more than just D-Day at the museum. So what are some of the things that people get to see there? Uh, We discussed the contribution both from the civilian perspective, so the war effort back home on the home front, and we also discussed all the other campaigns we were involved in, whether it's in the air, the Navy, the Merchant Navy, uh, the Italian campaign. D-Day and the Battle of Normandy is treated on the, an equal foothold as all the other uh, mm-hmm. contributions, really. And then we talk about the return to civilian life, and we talk about what the country became after the war, being shaped by um, a generation of returning veterans who who forged Canadian society in the 1940s, 50s. And we also talk about um, the Canadian forces today, or at least until we open in 2003, we have our last room of the museum is dangerously outdated now as we've been operating for over 15 years with contemporary contents that are no longer current at all. Now, do you, do you get a lot of visitors who are surprised at the Canadian contribution? I mean, because it was the same in World War I in, in the sense that Canadians were like vastly important in that war and yet often get no recognition for it. Do, yeah. people, do people know about the Canadian contribution when they come in? No, it's, it's very... Uh, and that's why the veterans who founded the Juno Beach Centre wanted someplace that would mark the, the landscape and, and show that we were there. Um, it's a bit of a running joke, but we're kind of like the poor parent of, of D-Day, you know? And, and we get a lot of sympathy uh, from visitors. They're like, oh, yeah, that's right, the Canadians were there, and it's all about the Brits and the Americans, so good for you. So we start at an angle that, that uh, is favorable to us in a, in a sense, but it's true that we don't have enough visitors compared to the other very popular sites um, of memory in Normandy. And yet this person, for example who wrote to you, and and again, I'll put this on the website, but he said he is a regular visitor to all these kinds of museums, and he said this one at the Juno Beach Centre was fantastic. It was the best of the bunch. That must be a feather in your cap. Yeah, no, we we get uh, comments like that uh, fairly regularly. What was special about this one is that he noticed everything about what we do. Um, He talked about the guides, he talked about the exhibitions, and I think that you really have a, a good strength as a museum when you can strike those points all across the the grid. Um, and I think it's a powerful place to be because it's a medium-sized museum, so you have the chance to... It's like a taille humaine. I don't know how to say that in English. Human scale. Yeah, it's at a, a really perfect scale, and I think that's what uh, really makes an impression on people. He was just able to voice it perfectly and it, and it was nice to see that he noticed all the things that 
we make sure are, are in place for visitor to come out of there and be like, that felt like a real, true, authentic experience. Mm-hmm. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, you've got this anniversary coming up. This is the 75th anniversary of the landing at D-Day, the, one of the greatest invasions, uh, seaborne invasions in history. What are some of the things you have planned for this special occasion? Um, we have a temporary exhibition that we co-created with the Canadian War Museum. It's on women during the Second World War, not just Canadian women, but also European women. So we just launched that in, in March, and we're hoping that by having that temporary exhibition in place during this strategic time of you know increased visibility, we can uh, shed a little bit of light on what uh, women experienced during that, that war, whether they are uh, sort of safe back home in Canada or, or in, in Europe experiencing occupation uh, and then liberation. What are some of the other events around in, in that area that are taking place, again, on this sort of anniversary time period? Well, it's um, we don't know all the details yet. Some of them aren't um, out. Uh, so the anniversary years are, are uh, really important. They're becoming very popular. Uh, it drains a lot of traffic, and they're, they've become more like big shows than mm-hmm. actual traditional ceremonies. So there's a really big shift if you think back to sort of an intimate visit by Pierre Trudeau in in. 1984 with like a handful of veterans and now you've got like these gigantic shows with thousands of people and and the highest level of security involved so it's um for us who work on the ground year round those ceremonies they're a little bit like christmas but we're more interested in making sure that beyond the big splash of these anniversaries we we continue to sustain the interest and and the understanding and the pertinence Speaking of interest, have you seen, uh, has there been a noticeable increase in interest or decrease in interest as we lose veterans from the wars? Uh, That's a question that we ask ourselves all the time. Like, how do we transmit this memory and this history without relying on the veterans? So that's what museums are there. They're kind of like a transmission belt for the veterans uh, so that when they're gone, we still have the tools and uh, the impact uh, of course, the veterans have a massive impact because it's human, it's real, it's it's emotional, but it's that legacy that they have in you that once you've experienced it, you're also able to transmit it. Mm. So, um, it's it's uh, to answer your question about um, rates of visitation and that sort of stuff. It's increasing steadily. Uh, the region of Normandy attracts over five million visitors per year, so it's sort of the second most visited spot in France, uh, largely to, to the, the, the Mont Saint-Michel, but it's an area that, that really uh, drives traffic. And so um, it's popular, but I'm not sure if the understanding of uh, the meaning of the events is, is also following that sort of popularity. So museums are there to make sure that it doesn't become a, a, a Walt Disney show, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, well, the, the 75th uh, this year, 2019, is the beginning of a campaign that we want to carry forward all the way to VE Day, the 75th of VE Day in 2020. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's an important year. As I said, you know, it brings increased uh, traffic and visibility. Um, it's uh, a huge challenge to, to make sure that uh, we continue beyond just these these big anniversaries, really. Marie-Ève thank you so much for this. Thank you for your time.